You are listening to the Codependent Millennial Podcast with Sophie Shilo, episode 13, Releasing the Need to Control. This episode is part of my series on the seven essential steps to moving beyond codependency. To receive the full guide along with all of the worksheets and written guidance, simply visit codependentmillennial.com forward slash essential, click the button that says get the guide and sign up there. Today we're talking all about how to handle your urges to attempt to control situations and people around you, aka to attempt to do the impossible. I will help you understand why you're so obsessed with control and what you actually need to be doing in your life to get the sense of peace that you think you'll get once you're able to control the people and situations around you. At the very end of this episode, I'm also going to talk about the life-changing codependency melting mantra, I am responsible for me, you are responsible for you. So let's dive in. One of the hallmarks of codependency is the underlying belief that unless things go a very certain specific way, we won't be okay. We think that other people and events cause our feelings and our experience of our lives, and therein lies the origin of our desire to control everything around us, or to attempt to control everything around us. When we have the belief that we're powerless to the actions of other people in order to feel a certain way or live a certain kind of life of course we would want to control them. That's totally natural. That's a natural urge or desire you would have if you held that belief. If you feel as if your well-being and peace of mind rely on other people, of course you'd go to great lengths to make sure that they behave exactly the way that you think they need to in order for your mind to think positive, loving thoughts about those people and about yourself. Of course, you would go to great lengths to control those people so that you feel okay and have the kind of life you think you can only have if they comply. When we have the misperception that our actions determine someone else's feelings and vice versa, we always end up attempting to manipulate and control because we don't know how to handle it when someone's upset, especially when we think it was our responsibility to quote unquote, make them happy. We disempower ourselves and limit ourselves when we do this though. And it's completely unnecessary. Not only do other people's actions not determine our emotions, actions, or results, but ours don't determine anyone else's either. So you can just go ahead and release any blame that you've wrongfully put onto someone else, and you can hand back blame that someone else tried to put onto you. You can also release any blame that you've put on yourself for allegedly causing someone else's sadness or anger. That blame was based on an inaccurate belief about the cause of people's emotions. What I want to teach you here is that adopting radical personal emotional responsibility in relationships is the absolute most liberating and empowering thing you can do for yourself and for others. We were socialized for the exact opposite though, so letting go of this takes some retraining of the brain, but it's a good thing that we have all the tools to do that. If you have the belief that other people control your emotions, you also likely have the belief that you control theirs. So when you take responsibility for the thoughts that you think and therefore the feelings you feel, You then open a door to a world where you hand back responsibility to other people for their own thoughts and feelings as well. So the brain retraining that we get to do here is essentially to realize that our thoughts create our emotions, not other people and their behavior. And also to realize that other people's thoughts create their emotions, not us and our behavior. Whatever you've taken responsibility for that wasn't yours, you are allowed to put it down. You're not violating anyone's boundaries by choosing not to accept personal accountability for the way someone else thinks, feels, or acts. That is their stuff, not yours, I promise. I also want to add that ultimately it's not even an issue of the fact that you don't have to manage other people's emotions. It's just that you literally can't. The hope that you could may have at some point provided you with some hope early on in life that there was a way out of a situation that was painful for you, but that hope is no longer serving you. It may have helped you cope as a child in a difficult living situation, but at this point as an adult, that hope is keeping you stuck in a futile series of efforts to create another person's emotions, and this is truly not possible. It's also stunting your growth and the growth and maturity of your relationships. With this understanding, you don't have to feel obligated to behave a certain way in order to take care of someone else's emotional well-being. You can release the need to control others because you have the emotional maturity 
to know that they don't cause your emotions and you don't cause theirs either. You can stop trying to manipulate them no matter how positive your intent and you can just allow them the space to live their own lives in whatever way they choose. You can embrace life even in its uncertainty or occasional disappointment rather than bracing against it in fear and trying to prevent it from happening. You can avoid so much unnecessary suffering when you are willing to simply experience life rather than to try and control it. So how can you start to put down the heavy block of guilt you're carrying around about this? Putting down this block, deciding to no longer take responsibility for managing other people's thoughts and feelings doesn't have to look like confrontation or anger. It could simply be an internal shift entirely within your own mind where you simply no longer take on the responsibility for the thoughts, emotions, or results in another adult's life. Simple. It's not easy, but it is simple. Whenever you feel the urge to obsess over how someone else is feeling and try to think of ways that you can control that, just come back to the mantra, I am responsible for me, you are responsible for you. I am responsible for me, you are responsible for you. This is not heartlessness, this is emotional adulthood. And when we've lived in codependency for a long time, what is healthy can sometimes seem heartless. I promise you, it is not heartless. It's just not enmeshed. This is healthy. This will serve you and the people you're in relationship with. This was a huge one for me. I was first introduced to the mantra, I am responsible for me, you are responsible for you by my coach. And I bristled when she first said it because I really did believe that I was responsible for other people's emotions and that if I didn't take responsibility for them, that I was being cruel. The result of me carrying around that belief was deep enmeshment in my relationships, was masked resentment, was feelings of powerlessness, was anger that was completely unexpressed and hidden and therefore felt 10 times as painful as it needed to feel. When I finally decided to entertain the thought that I wasn't responsible for the emotions of other adults, I was then able to start cultivating more emotionally mature relationships that served me and the other people in them. This is one of the lessons that my clients struggle with the most, and as I said, even now I'm still in the process of unlearning this myself. If you struggle with feeling responsible for gently tending to the emotions of people around you and creating a war within yourself as a result, you can see if there's a spot on my calendar for a free one-on-one 30-minute session this week so that we can get to the bottom of this. Just go to codependentmillennial.com forward slash free session to sign up. In the next episode, we'll be talking all about people-pleasing. And if this episode about control resonated with you, the episode on people-pleasing is mandatory listening. Until then, have an amazing day. If you liked what you heard in this episode, join me over on Instagram at Codependent Millennial for more tips on how to move beyond codependency and build a life you truly love. 